Hi everyone and welcome to Data Science in Everyday Life. In this video, you're going to learn about how industries are leveraging retrieval augmented generation uh, to adopt generative AI into their specific use cases. So in general, companies are in a race to adopt large language models like ChatGPT, GPT-4, um, Claude, Gemini, etc. Uh, to gain productivity improvements um, and to improve experiences for their customers overall. But there's a major limitation. These general purpose LLMs often lack relevant timely context uh, for specific industry use cases, and it could be very expensive to put all this context into the LLMs, uh, and it could also be time consuming. So in this video, you're going to learn more in detail about uh, retrieval augmented generation or RAG and how that helps uh, streamline this adoption. Retrieval augmented generation or RAG is a technique that combines the power of LLMs with vector search over relevant documents. So what is vector search? Well, this is uh, a classic example. Um, and essentially vectorizing is converting data into dimensions. So in this case here, there are two dimensions. Um, and images have been decomposed into these two dimensions. Uh, so one dimension is uh, size, so small and big. And the second dimension is the type of living creature. So going from tree all the way to complex uh, animals. And here you can see that uh, this is in basically the big tree dimension, um, this smaller tree is in the small tree dimension. Um, and then this is a small animal here. And then this is um, a big animal, right? So you can do the same thing, um, but now with words. Um, you know, this is an example of something that's talking about a big tree. So during yesterday's storm, a large tree fell on the road. Uh, this is talking about a small tree here, about bound size. Uh, this is an incident about a big animal. And this is something about a small animal. Now, uh, typical search engines like Google, um, you know, Bing before adding generative AI, uh, all essentially have collections of documents. Uh, and so when people search, they're essentially finding um, the right document through a combination of similarity and relevance and all of that. But essentially, you were, you'll be finding these um, websites that, that contain text that's like very relevant uh, to what you're searching for, right? Um, and so how can you uh, visualize that? Uh, well, let's take a, a simple example here um, where essentially we're using OpenAI's embedding model. Um, and what we're doing is we are converting this text into um, vectors, right? So two dimensions was just a prototype. Um, the actual OpenAI embedding model has thousands of uh, dimensions, as you can see here, uh, 1,536, right? So here we have essentially three different statements. Embedding one is the embedding for, for this sentence here. Uh, embedding two is the same thing. And then embedding three is something completely different. And as you can see, um, the cosine similarity, which is basically, if you're familiar with vectors, it's sort of the, um, relates to the angle between these two um, and so the similarity of them. Um, so cosine similarity is one minus the spatial distance. So in this case, um, the cosine similarity between these two is one because essentially they're the same, right? Whereas in when you're looking at the similarity between the first embedding and the third embedding, um, you see it's much smaller. So in this case, it's 0.7. Um, one thing I'd like to point out is that this embedding model in general works better with longer text. So I would say that 0.69 is still a little too high given you're talking about completely different things, um, but this is just a prototype. And also there's a lot of different kinds of embedding models. So I'd highly suggest if you're interested in this, looking up uh, what embedding models um, are in the leaderboard and what might be the best for your particular use case. So now let's see this example of embeddings to choose the right context, right? Um, so in this case, 
let's say you, you have the prompt, what was the sales increase for Amazon in the first quarter? Um, context one, context two, um, and context three are three relevant uh, contexts that you might add. Um, and then if you see, if you look at them carefully, so context one has to do with the sales increase, right? So this is particularly relevant. Context two has to do with the operating income. So not exactly relevant. And then finally, context three has to do with the income and dilution. And again, context three is somewhat relevant uh, because it's talking about Amazon, but not essential for answering this particular question. All right. Now let's call the get completion um, API, uh, which is, is basically a wrapper around this chat completions API uh, from OpenAI. Um, and let's see the answer that we get. Um, so here I'm feeding the prompt, which is this here. And that's basically the only information I'm feeding it. Apart from, of course, that we're using this GPT 3.5 model. Now let's run it. As you can see, here it says that Amazon reported a 44% increase in sales for the first quarter. Now that's not correct. Um, didn't we just see that it was 9%? Well, it turns out uh, we didn't really feed in the context. So here, ChatGPT is just giving some general answer. Uh, we don't know for what first quarter. Might be the first quarter of 2024, 2023, no idea. Um, but as you can see that this is not particularly relevant if you're concerned about only that information in the document, right? Um, so now let's try to figure out how to actually get that context information, right? Um, again, you can see here that we're trying to find the embedding between this prompt and compare that to the three different contexts. And we see that the first context has the highest um, similarity, right? And so that means that that's the most relevant context. Um, again, we can try the get completion. And here, as you can see, it gets the right answer. The sales increase uh, for Amazon on the first quarter was 9% uh, based on the reported net sales of 127 billion, right? So this is now exactly from this context. Um, and you can see that it's doing a good job. So now comes retrieval augmented generation. Um, why is it needed? Well, you don't want to manually feed in the right context for the answer, because at that point, the value of this is totally lost, right? Um, you might as well just type in the answer. Um, so doing that automatically over lots of documents and um, managing these workflows um, requires basically uh, thinking about like how to automatically incorporate these documents. And that's where retrieval augmented generation comes in. Now, the basic idea is to first split documents into uh, chunks that make sense. So this is let's say the entire Amazon document and we split it into various chunks. Um, and then what we do is we embed these chunks into vectors and we get the embedding from the question, um, compute the similarity like we've done for the few contexts, but now between all of these. So we compute the similarity between the questions and the chunks to find the relevant context. Um, combine these questions and contexts into a prompt um, and then we can also explore the contribution of various uh, parameters like maximum chunk length, different context length, uh, similarity thresholds, uh, fine tuning how we retrieve documents, etc. Then we append this context to the prompt, uh, the, and then the LLM reasons over the context to generate the final response. So let's see how that works in practice. Um, and then for this use case, we're using PyMu PDF um, to convert the PDF into text. Um, and we're essentially asking questions. We'll be asking questions over um, this PDF here. All right, so 
this is Q3 for 2023, uh, sorry, Q1 for 2023. Um, so we'll be asking, asking questions over this document, all right? Um, so there are a few things that you need to do first. Uh, first thing is to define a function for tokenizing these documents. Um, basically, you're taking text, you're uh, chunking it, so splitting it into money, and then you're applying embeddings, right? Uh, so these are the two functions for that. Um, and then so let's first try to uh, essentially take this entire text and let's try to ask a question. Um, text is not defined. All right, so you see the first 10 characters are amazon.com. Um, okay, so, but let's say for example, um, this text is really long, right? Let's say it's double. Um, what you can see is you'll see immediately an, an error here. Uh, this model's maximum context length is 16,000 something tokens, but your messages resulted in 25K uh, tokens, right? So. This il illustrates a problem with sending the entire document. And like, that's one of the reasons RAG is useful um, is because of these context uh, windows, right? Um, the other one is, like you saw, it doesn't have access to the most uh, recent documents. All right, so let's now uh, go ahead and tokenize this um, entire document. Um, so we've done that. And Let's now try and, and answer these, uh, these questions. So this function here is to answer the question uh, given the context. And this function here is to create that context uh, based on finding the most similar context uh, between the question and that uh, data frame, right? Uh, so now let's ask that question here. What was the sales increase for Amazon in the first quarter? Okay, great. Uh, this was 9%. And now let's try, what is the net income for Amazon in the first quarter of 2020? Um, here, interestingly, you see it gives an answer um, right here, right? So this is a document about Q1 of 2023, but that is, it's interesting that it's uh, giving that answer. Let's sort of go back um, to this to this Amazon quarterly document. Um, and let's see if 2020 uh, is there at all. So 3.2 billion, like where is it getting that from? Right, okay, so it says 3.2 billion in the first quarter, um, 2022. So this is clearly a wrong answer. All right, so hopefully that was uh, an introduction to retrieval augmented generation for you that you found useful. And I like to call this sort of basic rag as vanilla rag, right? So this shows the power of vanilla rag to essentially get information from PDF documents, but also the limitation um, in extracting these uh, complex interrelations between various aspects in, in the document. And there are various ways to improve this. One of them is like how you're extracting information. If, if your parsing is good, um, you would potentially be able to get much better information. Um, the other possible way to improve is in prompt engineering, saying things like, what if the context is not entirely relevant to the question? Um, should you basically default to uh, a negative or you know, answer not found? Um, the third way of improving things is in the retrieval, right? There are various um, sorts of retrieval alg algorithms, and I have a blog on one of them called Self-Rag. Um, essentially, you can fine tune how documents are retrieved, and if things are not relevant to the context, you can um, use another model to, to reject these contexts. 
Uh, another way of tuning things um, is by changing the, um, the way you're embedding models, uh, context chunking and all of that. So um, this touches on an important point, which is evaluation. So the step you would need to, the steps you would need to take is essentially you develop a basic RAG pipeline, you evaluate them on certain um, label data that you have and see um, how good it's doing, right? There are many ways of evaluating. The simplest evaluation would be to see this, a string match between your generated answer and the actual answer. Uh, Ragas has a very good evaluation framework uh, for many different aspects. And, and there are other cool things that are going on in evaluations, like using LLMs as a judge to evaluate their own response, for example, right? And then once you have these evaluations, you can further use them to tune how you're doing RAG. Uh, and then you'll have a better RAG model. And once you're really confident about all of this, uh, you can start deploying these to production and um, seeing how customers interact with this and do you have positive information, uh, positive feedbacks in general. All right, so thanks for watching. I really think that you know, RAGs could be a way for companies to differentiate them, themselves uh, from other companies uh, that are using generative AI. Um, and yeah, this could be you know, the future. Maybe the future of AI in industry settings is more like domain specific rather than uh, general purpose models, right? Um, so I'm excited for this um, and I hope you all enjoyed watching this video and I will see you all very soon in data science in every day. Bye.